<laughs> anyway, I enjoy I enjoyed the film. Uh, I got I got the Q and A last night, so I'll try to avoid going into those questions. But one of the things I, I was curious about is what is it like to live in Fiji for a year? I mean, how hot is it, for example? I mean, I, 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 you get a sense because you're watching your life. But the one thing you don't know in a film is are people really hot? You know, is it really is it really so hot that you don't want to really do anything? And there's a camera around you about you 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 feel like you're in. <laughs> apathy or something like that. Let's talk about just talk about what the physical stuff was like. I noticed you guys were you, you had to wear school uniforms, but when you weren't doing that, you're wearing as little as possible. Just talk about what Fiji's like. The thing about heat in Fiji is that it's it's brutal. It's very brutal initially, but you don't have any change. It's it doesn't vary that much. Every day it's the same temperatures at the same time essentially. So you're never oh uh, you're never inside either. So like. The first week or so is really hot, and then you just get used to it. And every day, like, you're waking up and all your windows are open. It's fresh air constantly, and you're just, like, you're used to it. You develop a layer of, like, it's hot, but whatever. It's hot every day. Who cares? But, like, compared to here, everyone is just, like, a complete yeah. pansy about it because, any yeah, in Austin. Because it's really, really hot in Austin. I'll talk about the weather with more hatred in Austin than I do in Fiji because you're so used to AC. You wake up in it, and you get dressed in it. And you step outside and you're just like, holy shit, it's hot. And you run to your car to like turn on the AC and close all of your windows. So there's, there's not the, the, the varying degrees of weather. So yeah, I mean, it's hot. You don't feel like jogging or like, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what else you would do. But it, 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 it's good that it's hot and you can deal with it and you can just sit around and be comfortable and not really do anything still. Throw, throw it to mom and the Oh, my enemy. The, the worst thing for the year for me was a mildew. That was my enemy for the year was, you know, keeping keeping my stuff. Well, the electronics for they were stolen, kind of keeping them from breaking down from the mildew. But just my clothes, and I really hate the smell. So I would take my clothes and I would put them out on the line to get the sun and dry out. And then they go back in the closet because the mildew really built up on them, you know. Yeah, it really. Yeah. So that was tough. But it helped enormously that there was... It all depends on how much you have to do. So it's nice when you aren't that busy to be able to kind of you just give in to the heat. I hated it before, but then it was like I slept a lot, I sat around a lot, and now I can have a much better heat tolerance than I used to. It was great living there. It's not just about the the heat. It was a really beautiful, um, welcoming, liberating place to be. Uh, well, I don't really have any friends in Austin, oh, but wow. <laughs> 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 yeah. But um, the thing that was like from there and where we lived in New York, like my, the thing that was the greatest for me, which I loved, is that like um, I said in the movie too, I think. But um, in New York, it'd just always be like you could have one person come over, or go to one person's house, and you still have to go far. But then like there, it's like you can just walk like a little bit to get to this village where just like everyone is. And so, like, we'd always have just, like, games of something going on, like volleyball game, soccer game, rugby game, just whatever. And that was, that was awesome. I love that. Plus, so. when your friends came over, it looked like you were having a good time. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, here in, in America, like, uh, we always just feel, like, pressure to do something. And so we try to do something. And when we're not, we're bored. But in Fiji, you really could just sit there and just have a good time. So... Even if you're just doing that here, though, it's still it's still not as like it's still kind of boring when you're just here, just how it is. But in Fiji, I was never really bored at all. I, I, I noticed one thing about the film. There was that, that scene with all the, the stuff that gotten stolen and the, and the Australian landlord is over and all that drama. And you're just off sitting reading. You know, you're, you're ignoring it. I'm I'm not a big reader actually, but um, the the camera crew and Steve and all them when they came over to film it, uh, the new Harry Potter book had just come out. So they brought that, and I was actually reading that, uh, and then I finished it and didn't read it all. I read like two books that year, and they just happened to get one of them on film. So I wonder before we move on, uh, you 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 were one of the little stars of the film because your comments sort of cut through whatever else has happened. You just make the comments that oh, I hate apocalypse now, that kind of stuff. Talk a little bit about that, your your philosophy that comes through. I just love it. 
my philosophy. You want me to name off yeah. the other movies I hate? Like, what do you, what do you want to hear? <laughs> um, I don't even know. I hate an American movie. Yeah. We showed that there, and that sucked a lot. Um, I don't know. Any, any movie over two hours is way too long for me, is my main thing with movies. Well, and then generally independent films. Independent films are usually over two hours also. Not that. No, that isn't true. Yeah, they are. Uh, they are. They just feel like it. Yeah. What do you hate about know. Apocalypse Now? Let's talk about that. that well, it's really long. And, like, at, at first it, like, makes you seem like it's going to be a good movie. It makes it seem like it's going to be a good movie because the beginning's like, action and everything. And then it's just these guys on, like, a little boat. And then there's, like, a tiger. And then I don't even know what happens from then. I'm like, <laughs> I, it, uh, I mean. Yeah. Francis didn't either. <laughs> anyway, well, John, why don't you talk about what it was like to, to actually live there and to live there. I mean, you were doing a lot of sweeping at the movie house. That was the you know, thing. I must have swept. If you take the ratio of sweeping time I have in Real Paradise, I must have spent at least 12 hours a day sweeping that place out. It was a challenge to keep the dirt out. But it wasn't that much time out of the day. What would happen, though, is you go down to the theater, open up a little bit to clean up or whatever, and people would just start hanging out. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of them were those younger kids, but it was, just, it was just a nice hangout. I keep thinking if we do find a way to go back and reopen certain months of the year, we should really have other things there that make it an even better community gathering spot. It would be great to have a little room where, you know, everybody loved those magazines we had in our house. So if you did have... And he just brought up Harry Potter. If you did have a little mini library, reading room, magazine place, that would be very cool. You know, and a little tea stand or whatever. It would be great to, you know, further de yeah. develop. That's the first time I've heard that idea. It is the most ridiculous idea of all time. All right. Well, let's... They, they love let's, him. It's absolutely true. They love him. But you know that every single book or magazine would have one page left in it. They'd rip out every page with pictures on it. Well, that's why we could get all our friends who are involved with magazine publishing in America and around the world to just send us tons and tons and tons of free stuff so we wouldn't have to worry about it. But hey, one last comment about the weather vis-a-vis um, -vis this movie, Real Paradise, is that um, it's the Southern Hemisphere, so seasons are reversed. And, and I'm basically agreeing with Georgia when she says every day is kind of the same, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of darkness, because it's near the equator, and it's very similar conditions in the climate. However, summer, which is there, which is winter here, like Christmas is in summertime, right? Definitely a bit warmer, way damper, and much rainier, uh, if damper and rainier isn't redundant. Um, wintertime there, summertime here, wintertime there, when the film was made, June, July, is a season where it's generally going to be a little bit cooler and definitely drier, and it was very lucky for, the, for Steve and his crew, actually, that that was the case, because they hardly had any rain you know, in the 27 days they were shooting it. It probably, I can only think of it raining a few times. And then, and it also wasn't so incredibly steamy hot that, um, you know, that would have made life really, really uncomfortable for the, for the DP, for example. And I think, I think it was a little bit better um, during that span of time. So that's one of the things about being in a place for a long span of time. You, you get, like Georgia says, you adjust but as you adjust, you also sort of notice small differences that you would never notice if you were just coming in for a week or two. You know, so you did, I did come to very much appreciate the fact that June was a way nicer month than January, you know? Okay, now I want to ask you a round robin too, starting with you, John, what, what you thought about the character of you, yourself, that appears on the screen. And did you have any idea that that's how you were coming off when they were shooting, as opposed to what pops up in the movie? You know, when I see the movie, the part that I, that, that, you know, I, I did have dengue fever, so if I'm looking for an excuse for my short temper, because um, everybody in my family knows I never get angry about anything, um, it would, I would kind of throw that card out there a little bit. You know, I was sick for a good part of the time. Um, ten days, Janet's flashing me ten fingers. Uh, thank you, I can count. Um, uh, ten days are really, really, really bad days, so... Um, I, but I, I do think that that was the end of a year, and I think it was an end of a year when I probably felt like my happiest time of the year was probably about midway. And so by the end, instead of feeling like, oh, I'm so sad this is ending and this is so great, I was also probably relieved, you know, like it's ending, let's, I'm sort of ready to get out of here. Um, what, 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 I, what I still, and I'm curious to hear what Wyatt has to say about this, what I really am not quite sure how to interpret, even when I watch the movie myself, which I have a lot, 
um, is how people are watching me, like doing, att attempting to introduce the shows. You know, when I was doing that, it just felt fine and natural. I see it in the movie, and I kind of, you know, I cringe some. I'm like, oh, why did I do that? So I was trying to tell you that all year that you shouldn't do them, but uh, how I came off in the movie um, makes me look really funny, which is good. I think the editing helped me a lot in it. I didn't think I was really funny at all when they were filming. I didn't think I really did anything at all when they were filming. I thought I just sat there in these the house. You get these that come out. Yeah, and like I probably only said like three funny things that month, but they all made the movie. So. Well, I had a nervous breakdown the first time I saw it. Essentially, the closest I've ever been to a nervous breakdown. But um. I don't know. I've come to grips with it. I mean, I didn't let them film me that much, so they worked with what they had, and it's certainly a part of me, but I, I just don't like the fact that people watch the movie and they, uh, they feel like they, have, they, they know me and they know everything about me and how I'll respond to things and how to treat me. And, and it's just, like, completely ridiculous because it's part of me, but it's a very narrow part of me. So that's what I have to say. The, the whole process surprised me because I thought it would be, I thought I'd be more shy about it and then I find when the camera's there I found that I really wanted to share my experience with them in a way I didn't expect at all and I thought I wouldn't be able to watch it and then I was actually really okay with who that person was. I'm, I'm less comfortable actually with John and George's portraits in the film um, in terms of uh, a flushed out experience um, and it is odd to have part of your life depicted and it is interesting to have your life construed in a narrative construct by somebody else's story. This is Steve's version of our lives. Um, but that said, I still find myself kind of engrossed and interested, and I'm proud of everybody that we were, were strong enough and comfortable enough with ourselves to expose stuff that people usually hide. And we know, you know, I think we're a really strong family. We have a lot of fun together. Um, and so I don't know if we say, like, we're bigger than that in a way. The other question I wanted to ask of all of you guys is it comes to me through the film that there's a subtext that uh, the Fijians are these happy-go-lucky people and they have this conservative Catholic thing in that part of the island that's been imposed on them and then there's these Westerners who come in with their freedom of the movies and everything. There's all these interesting things at war with each other. What, what's the reality there? I thought the Fijian people were really, seemed to be really happy. You know? the, the Fijians are really happy people. I mean, they're happy, but their life is that's hard. A, that's a fine description of the film. Do you, anybody dispute how he just described those three. No, 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 just, I mean, well, that's, I, a, the, the, that, well, I'll that's, say, that's the situation. The Fijians are incredibly happy people and warm. A lot of them came up to us and said, you know, you want to come here, but we want to go to America because our life is really hard, you know, and we wish we had education and we wish we had more stuff. Why are you coming here? But they're also, they're so happy and in a way childlike, they embrace authority figures. So they give the Catholic Church its authority. They like that. It helps them, you know. And then, um, we, well, I just, the, the movie certainly shows the Western culture coming in and us being there, but the one thing the movie doesn't show is how much we, by making ourselves accessible to the Vigians, it gave them something that they embraced and hadn't had access to before. They never had Americans really there and open and saying, hey, come, to, this is our life and we'll be friends with you, and they have a huge curiosity. And yeah, they thought that was great. Yeah, they, they thought that was great. Because usually it's like tourists who are locked away and maybe they take a picture and, you know, go to one, like, you know, meal. But it's kind of, we were really available as real people all year long. And it was a mutual exchange that was phenomenal for all of us. Just on what she said about, like, uh, all the Fijians wanting to go to America, they all claim that they want to go to America, but... I think it's because they just think it's this like imaginary world of, of movie stars and there's like gangs on the street and there's just this crazy stuff going on all the time. And if, if the reality of it, if they actually came here, I think they'd absolutely hate it. And, and, and you know, well, there's, there are some, no, whatever, okay, don't leave close no, the microphone to answer this question. Why what do you want? It like they wanted to move here, but it doesn't mean they don't want to see it. No, but the thing about it is they all want to, they, they say they all want to move to America and they don't know anything about it. In the second place, they all, if you ask them where they would want to go, anywhere in the entire world where they'd want to go, they say Jamaica, which is just like, it's a, it's a, 
it's a more more touristy Fiji with guns. Fiji with guns. Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> They're in one of the most like serene places of all time. The worst thing that'll happen is like someone will fall out of a coconut tree. Like it, there's essentially no danger physically from from people. So oh, that tree fell on that guy though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't even remember what question I was answering. Why? What's your feeling about the interaction with the Fiji? Um, it, I I don't think it was that hard to, like, try to be part of their culture. I don't know. People at first, like, kind of didn't know what to think about me because the last white person to go to that school was this crazy girl, Kelly. From around here, yeah. She was apparently from around here. <laughs> and she, uh... They called her bipolar. Yeah. They didn't know they had any psychological lingo, so that was, like... They, they she was really crazy, bipolar. like, they, they really thought she was crazy. And so that she was like the only white person in history to go to that school, so they like that's what they expected, but then they were fine with me. You redeemed your so. race, and then she came and set it back. <laughs> a little half of Just that. kidding. George is good influence. The the thing I the thing for me, uh, and again, this isn't so much in the movie, but Fiji is great and probably easier for these guys because they could sort of as they've said, relax into it. I actually was the guy who had a job to do. All right, I'm, I'm, I know we showed the movies for free, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a business, and it doesn't mean that you didn't have to accomplish certain things. And as soon as you have those needs in your life, um, which involve relying on the work of other people, the responsibility of the other people, the sense of timing of other people, then you're in trouble. Um, and my, my basic relationships, or a lot of my key relationships, were with the other people who were in the business community. Uh, a lot of Indo-Fijians, obviously, because they, they're the commercial class of the country, but then, then some Fijians uh, you know, on the island, like Kenny Madden, who we've talked about, our friend who ran Island Pizza, and a kayaking business, because they had a much clearer sense of what was involved in actually trying to you know, operate a business. Um, I don't know, Janet looks like she has, so Janet looks like she has a... I, I just grew to really hate the expression no worries, you know, because people say no worries. In the beginning, you think, oh, great, everyone's going to take care of it. And it's like, no, no worries, and nothing's going to happen. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. like you can't worry about it. It's like what it is. You know, and they just laugh. I mean, they just laugh, too. You know, it's just like you can't, it's really hard to get anything done. Yeah. That is so true. It's a certain sense. I mean, I, I get the certain sense, too, that in Fiji it's hard to fail because, because the threshold is low, basically. They don't have a sense. They have the same sense of success and failure because what is success? You know, what, what can you succeed at if you can't get off the island, if you're, if you're not well enough educated to have the kind of middle class skill or something? Talk a little bit about that. What is, what is that? People say that's desirable sometimes. People call that paradise. I mean, people say getting away from it all. What, what does that mean when you actually get away from it all? You know? But when you can't get back to it all? which is their dilemma. You, know, you can't go back to the place where everything's happening. Anybody, anybody <laughs> want to grab that one? I don't know where you went with the second half of that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think, think we, was, I think we all got confused. Wait, wait okay. was that the part yeah. on, like, uh, what's success? Yeah, what's success? What, what does success mean in Fiji? You know, that's a, uh, to what, be the best like, farmer. I don't know. They, <laughs> sorry, yeah, she yeah. always says that. But, I never said that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, they really don't have anything they can do. And the kids that drop out of school really end up the same as the kids that finish school. Yeah. Uh, I guess success is, like, I guess it's kind of getting off the island, right? And getting to college, but no, I mean, the, the islands with the colleges and stuff aren't as nice, so. No, but the, the University of the South Pacific, which is the university for all of those groups of islands around there, for Tonga, for Samoa, for Tuvalu, for Fiji, it's in Suva, the capital, which is where I was living. So, I mean, for the people of Tabuni, the people who grew up in small villages, there's, there's really, there's nothing for them, really, you know? Like, I would be content, way more content being there and just kind of like, actually... I don't know. My whole thing was that I would have to, I, I would love to live in Fiji, but I have to accomplish something first, and then I'd feel okay about living there. But, um, 
the people the cities the cities are actual cities and if you if you really want to get off of the island you can so you either have to have like a huge amount of motivation and realize there's like a world outside of there or just be happy with like being enclosed by this beautiful ocean in a beautiful jungle and like go swimming in the natural water slide every day which i don't see as such a bad bad thing it's better than it, it was poignant for certain people like Lavinia George's friend was really really smart and a lovely person and she spoke English really well because she, she went out of her way Cuba. well she also went out of her way to any time she could have exposure to anybody who spoke English she did she took advantage yeah, of that but you're saying that because you were talking to her after she was in Sudan. right okay she was at but she well she wanted to go to more school and her family couldn't afford it so she actually couldn't stay in school as long as she wanted to and she, she had to come back and she babysat mind. she babysat for her mother's younger kids and all the resources went to one of her sisters whose dream was to no, be a flight attendant to work in hospitality no that family no. that family did well because the parents worked as dive masters at the at the, the garden resort which is like a huge it's surrounded by the rainbow reef Tavuni, so it's a beautiful beautiful scuba diving and uh her parents were, were dive masters And the other question I have is, and, and this is it's a little open-ended, but I want to make it a little focused too, is sex comes up in the, in the film in terms of how the teenagers on, on, on Fiji react to it, how what they talk about, how the movies interact, how the, how the American movies and bringing all the, the craziness of American movie sex into, into Fiji with its supposedly conservative culture and everything. Talk about what 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 impression about the sexual mores of the Fijians or about what, what sex in the movies meant to them did, did you come away with? Well, it's a conservative culture, but it's a very close community culture, so no one ever really has their own space or their own, like, privacy. So, like, when you're surrounded by the entire community, everyone, like, you can't wear shorts that are too short, or, like, it, 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 it goes back and forth really weird, because, like, you can be totally naked, but you just have to be doing laundry totally naked. So, <laughs> like, like they, 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 they see certain things as very acceptable, and then there's like at other time. It, it's, it's all about timing for stuff. But um, the sex there, people, I don't, I, I don't know where I was going with that. Besides the fact that like people are, are they see it at a very early age because like they, they all live in one room, they'll walk in at the wrong time. And like people have babies really early because there's nothing else to do to entertain them. And I don't think the movies had any any effect on that at all. I think it's just like a primal instinct and, and they go with it on their own. I, I you know, again, I, I was I was mindful, um, even though we weren't being <coughs> persecuted for content reasons by anybody, um, I would try to be mindful of sexual content in the movies we showed, um, which was, again, just like any ratings board in the world, the, F the Fiji censor board was, you know, primarily and predominantly worried about that. Violence was no problem, language was no problem. In fact, South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut was rated PG. <laughs> Who knew? Um, but we did, we had a slip, I had a slip, um, because um, you know, there were ratings and they were ratings that were hard ratings where you couldn't, there would be R16, R18, and R21. And you couldn't see those movies if you were below that age, even if somebody accompanied you, I think. Is that correct, actually? Yeah. So... Yeah, there was I no never no. saw it in... I lived in Suba, and I never went saw it in Forest. Okay. And in New Zealand, I was, they let me into R16 movies. But it's, still, it's PG and New Zealand. Yeah. At any rate, <laughs> my, my point is that uh, I would kind of have my own rating system if I decided an R16 wasn't merited. I would decide everybody could come. Because as, as you could see, there were a number of younger people at the theater. Not only they, they sat in front, so you see them more in, the, in real paradise than you would if you were in the back of that theater where more of the grown-ups sat, okay? Um, but there was, there, was, there was one movie that was uh, My Fall from Grace, um, and that was Eight Mile. And that was really had nothing to do with the rap language. It had everything to do with the Eminem, Brittany Murphy sex scene in the factory. And, and again, I should have known better, and as soon as the scene came on, I just, I wanted to put my hand over the porthole in the projection booth, because I kind of saw trouble coming, and it was, it was a, it was a, it was a problem. Mm -hmm. And I tried to really mind my P's and Q's even, even more carefully after that. But, it would still would have been a quandary for me, because, and again, George and Wyatt will correct me if they disagree, I'm sure, but there was so much pent-up excitement to see that movie. And it went, obviously, kids more than anybody else, because it was really the point at which, that was the first entree of Eminem, rap, hip-hop, any of that stuff, really. That, I played that song about every eight 
Yeah, lose yourself was on on the on the one radio station every time you turned around, and the and the kid across the street ha he had a copy, right? Yeah, he like a bootleg of it. Would play it really loud while we were playing basketball. Over and over and over again. So I didn't really want to keep anybody out of that movie, and maybe even if I'd known what the consequences were going to be in terms of community disapproval, it still would have been hard to keep the the under 16s out of that. You, do you guys disagree? Yeah. yeah. As you see in that scene where, where nobody has ID, right? No one even knows their own birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, you did that. You, you actually card, were, quote, carding people at one point. How did you decide? <laughs> well, really, if it was like one of my friends, they could go in. And if it was someone I didn't like, they couldn't go in. <laughs> and if I, if I didn't know them, then if they like were taller than me, they could go in. Like I, I don't really know. I just, I just kind of let everyone in except the kids I didn't want to let in, and the really little kids, that like Uliano. He was really small. Under 10, right? Yeah, but after ten, it's just like the you're good. The effect Jackass had the showing of that. Everybody talk about that. What was Jackass like when it was fun to show on the TV? It seemed that there was. A well, I mean, we kind of left right after it, so there kind of were, like, no consequences for us. Um, I, I mean, they really liked it, and no one killed themselves in a golf cart. They don't have golf carts or anything. I don't see how they can act out those stunts, so. Okay, um, generally speaking, uh, the question came up last night, but I want to ask it again, is if, if the film had been, like, a whole year's project, yeah, somebody wanted to make a film of your entire year there. Uh, what would your reaction to that have been, and what do you think that film would have been like? And what, how would it have changed your life on Fiji? <laughs> That's the question. It, the, 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 the idea for the trip to Fiji didn't come... It, the, the idea for the trip was way before any idea to film it, but filming was talked about early, early on. Before we left, it was talked about. While we were there, it was talked about. So the entire time, like... I thought the plan was like do the entire year and so like by mid-year when it wasn't being filmed I was just like it's not gonna happen it's not gonna get filmed so um I don't know it, it I think it worked out well it since some of it was filmed and some of it had to be filmed it, it worked out well how it did because if they had come when we had first come we wouldn't have had the relationships we wouldn't have been able to film any Fijians because they just would have been confused and run away because they didn't know what was going on but just like since we already knew them that's why they were they were openly available most of the time, and uh, so I think that's that's the exact same thing I said yesterday. But <laughs> it would have been a disaster. There are plenty of things that are missing uh, from the year because they were only there the last month. But we couldn't, I couldn't have lived with the experience of having cameras around all year because it wouldn't have felt authentic, um, and it would have completely gotten in the way of what we were doing. So you know, it's it's. I feel bad about it, um, but there were there was all this really interesting stuff, like the relationship with the Indo Fijians and the Fijians, particularly rich, that you know wasn't documented at all, um, and our different moods and our different acclimation that they're not a part of it. But I don't know how they couldn't have because the cameras do change the experience. They they create their own truth. There's just no doubt about that. That any any just on a practical level, an attempt to document this on a full year basis would have been, you know, prohibitively expensive. But if you had, if you were prophetic and you could know at the end, what? If you could, what are you looking at? Oh, if you could have known um, at the, if you could have known ahead of time if, which four weeks to pick during the year, you know, if you were only going to shoot 27 or 28 days, you could have had a genius movie. Uh, because it, it would have been some point around the arrival. It would have been some point when it was sheer bliss. It would have been some point around the, the, the first conflict, uh, the first real conflict with the church, which is when, you know, things start, went bad. Um, I'm not even sure what, oh, the third point would have been this incredible week during the, one of the school vacations when the two indo fijian patriarchs of the village of Wairiki died at the beginning, you know, well, that's actually not a week, that's two weeks and a month, but in April, yeah, you know, that was an amazing time. And then, of course, the first week that the film crew arrived and all hell broke loose would have, would, would, still would have been the, la the fourth and final week that you would have picked to represent the year. So, hey, we got, you know, it, we, there, there was a lot of drama, 
um, and it was it did just naturally occur. So I guess you could say the decision to go with the final phase there, the final weeks, the final month, whatever. Um, you know, if you had to pick just one time, I guess that was the one to pick. A couple of questions so. for you. Couple questions. Oh. Nothing. A couple yeah. questions for you, John. Uh, how was dengue fever? Did you fully recover from it? I mean, it's a very, it's jokey, but it's a very serious uh, illness. <clears throat> uh, yes, I'm fully recovered. Yes, it's terrible for 10 days. I had about a two-month recovery period after that there and obviously back in America, and it's, it's fine. It's not like malaria. It goes away. You can get it again, though, so stay away from mosquitoes. And I want to just ask you about the, this kind of broad question about the independent film scene. You, you've been kind of the guru of it for like 20 years. We've all been through it. I'm a film reviewer and everything. Yeah. Uh, we, we sense ups and downs in the whole thing, you know. What was launched at Sundance in the 80s sometimes seems fabulous to us still. Sometimes it doesn't seem much less than fabulous. Right. Your own feeling about it, your own sense in the future <clears throat> about what your role in that's going to be. You help with Parting Glances and Go Fish, these wonderful queer films and other things. What do you see? Are there any more mountains to climb for you? You, know, you just want to kind of draw back from it. I, yeah, I have no idea. I meant it, I meant it um, last night at the, at the screening. I, I, for me... Seeing Once Upon a Time in the West shown outdoors in Monument Valley this week was ba basically the most fun I've had since Fiji. Even though I've enjoyed, a number, you know, I've enjoyed, I, I feel refreshed about independent film, but I still don't feel like we're, we're at a point where there's a lot of uh, fresh and original directions that people are taking. Um, you know, I think a lot of the kinds of films and genres that are being, we're, that people are making films in are, are, are kind of just building on what, what's, on the foundation that was laid down, you know, from the mid '80s to the mid '90s, and the and the fact that it's all that it's such a Sundance centric world, because that wasn't the case, by the way, with those films in the '80s. Yeah, Sex Lies and Videotape launched at Sundance, but until then, nothing launched at Sundance. Okay, so that's '89, and then there were still other variations for a few years after that. But now it seems as if that's the be all and end all, and that's uh, that's a complicated thing to sort through politically to have all the power. You know, in in ten days in January in a you know in a small town in the mountains of Utah, it's a, it's a yeah, not something I feel great about. But I'm 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 back in the I'm sort of what are you doing? The fuck are you doing? Now you're gonna get a Pearson family moment. This is, this is the film. Oh, oh, that was so su that was so subtle. I couldn't. Okay, that's enough. You got a last one for Wyatt. Here you go, Wyatt. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about that? Or oh, I've got a couple questions for you. You were in that strange uniform, which I couldn't figure out when you were in school. What's that you were wearing? Um, it's called the Sulu, like the it, like the long straight thing. It's called a Sulu. It's like all the Fijian men wear them. Um, they do, but I hated it. Like yeah, it really sucked wearing it. And like explaining it to people here, they're just like, "Why? Why would you even do that?" And I'm like, "I know, I don't know why I did that, but um, I I know, but like there, like it that it's like men's apparel there. It's that's what they wear." <laughs> and final question: uh, How how much is your professional life likely to differ from your father's, and how much is likely to be informed by it? Because you seem like a uh, you know, very much like your father in some ways, seems very different in some ways. What do you what do you want to do when you, when you get to do things in the world? Nothing that will ever make me go to Sundance again. Um No, I'm not no. Sorry then you I'm not going to Sundance again. Means you can't and work for Mercedes Benz. <laughs> <laughs> Since they're the main sponsor. That doesn't mean you have to go. <laughs> no, do, you, do you have any entertainment uh, ambitions at all, of film or other ambitions? Not really. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. He's too young to have that career yeah. thing that worked out. He just said the other day he's going to be open to a lot of things, experience stuff, and figure it out that way. Oh. And then be the best farmer ever in Fiji. <laughs> 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 okay, that's good. All right, thank you guys. Thank you very much.